guys. Today, we're going to be taking a look at how to do linting in React. So first of all, what actually is linting? Well, linting is a way to define some rules that your code needs to follow, like styling rules or logical rules, so that your code is the same all around your project, or if you use the same rules in every project, then throughout all your projects, so that you maintain a minimum level of quality. So let's get started implementing linting. All right, so here we are in VS Code and we can start off quite simply by running npx eslint dash dash init. So this will basically um, run the code we need to do to um, enable linting. And it first of all asks us if we want to install the eslint package to do that, which we of course want to do. So this can take a few seconds. Now it asks us if we want to install the config package, all that stuff is necessary. And now we get to a little Q&A basically, what we want our linting to do. So in our case, we want to have um, the most help we can get. So the first option would basically give us the least information about what's wrong with our code. And the last one is the strictest. And we're gonna go with that because in that case we can see all the things that might need optimization here. So now we need to define how we import um, JavaScript modules because we're using normal React, we're using the import export uh, syntax. So we're gonna go with that. Then we need to define that we're using React. We don't use TypeScript in this case. React runs in the browser. How would you like to define your style for your project? We want to define our own style in this case. You could use a popular style guide if you just want a uniform styling with most other projects. But just so you know what you could choose, we're gonna go with that option. So first of all, what um, format should your config files have? JSON is a default normally, so we're gonna go with that. Then, um, because most ID, most ID actually use spaces to, for indentation and not tabs, even if you hit the tab key, we're gonna go with spaces here. We want single quotes for strings and stuff, you know. We want line endings from Unix because that's um, cross-platform. And we do require semicolons. Now we want to install the ESLint plugin for React so that it's actually compatible with React. And now that this is done, we should be able to look into this little eslintrc.json file, which basically contains the config we just created. And we can go into our package JSON and actually add another script right here. So that script is gonna be lint. So basically that's gonna be the command npm run lint. And what this needs to execute is eslint source slash star star slash star dot js and then in these brackets right here x so what this means is run the linter over everything in the source directory so the directory that contains our javascript and every subdirectory that's what these two stars mean any file name that ends with javascript or javascript extended for react files so this basically means every JavaScript file and also every JSX file will work. So now we can actually try that out already by running npm run lint. And now you can see that we have some errors here, actually quite a few. And this is only the default project. So it doesn't seem to quite follow these rules. And most of these, as you can see, are expected indentation of four spaces, but found two. So how can we fix that? Well, you could either go ahead and change the spaces in your IDE, but I think the two spaces are quite fine for readability's sake. So we're gonna go back to our ESLintRC and we're gonna look for this four right here at intent and we're gonna change it to two. Also, something you can see right here is that it says error every time. And that would mean that if you put this in like a continuous integration pipeline, that these errors would break your pipeline, which you might want or you might not want. So if you don't want that, then you can go to all the places inside of these rules and actually change error to warn. This will mean that it will still inform you if something is wrong, but it won't break your pipelines. So in this case, if the indentation is wrong, we might want a warning, but we don't need the pipeline to break. That would be a bit annoying. So now we change this to two and warn. And now if we run the linter again, then we should first of all see fewer errors because all of these um, indentation errors are gone. And now just to test out that our warn also worked, we're just gonna add one space here to break the indentation, run it again. And now you can see we've got 22 errors and one warning and that warning is the expected indentation right here. So that's basically how you would adjust the rules if something wasn't like you wanted it to. Also there's like um, 
React must be in scope when using JSX. That would basically mean that you needed to import React up here every time you wanted to use JSX, which can be annoying as well. So let's take a look at how you can change that. So what you would need to do to um, turn off these rules is you need to copy this React slash React in JS scope and go to the rules right here in your ESLint file. Add this rule right here. This is an array, by the way. And then you would just say off. And now if we add this styling right here so that everything is proper JSON and run our linter again, then we should see that these problems are gone. So that would be a way to turn off a certain rule if you don't like it. I personally think that it's not really necessary to import a React object every time just because you're not interacting with it, so why would you need it? You might think differently about it. If so, then all power to you. I'm going to turn it off here. And now there is one more thing, which is that um, it says that it's missing semicolons everywhere, which is actually true. Like this doesn't add semicolons anywhere. And you might try formatting it, for example, with something like a prettier formatter, which I'm going to do real quick. And that adds all these semicolons. So if you wanted, you could um, apply a prettier and make the rules the same as your linting rules so that everything happens automatically. Then it would just basically remind you if you forgot that or something. I would recommend that actually. Just take a look at what happens now if I run the linter again, because now most of these errors are actually gone. The only issue is there are of course multiple files and not just this one, so not every um, linting rule was applied. But as you can see, it currently says zero warnings potentially fixable with fix option. So what does that mean? Well, there's one more thing we can do actually, which is we can add another command right here to the linting, which is lint fix or whatever you want to call it. And that is executed with a dash dash fix um, flag. And that would fix all the errors that the linter could um, fix automatically. So that could be something like broken indentation, I think. Let's just check that real quick. Yeah. So if your indentation is broken, then that can be fixed automatically. So if you now run npm run lint fix, then that should fix your indentation automatically, as you just saw, it did. And that's also a way to clean up your um, code a bit. I wouldn't do this automatically because sometimes it can break stuff, but if you keep an eye on what's happening, then that should still work. Now if we just run the linter again, then we should see that there are only really few errors or even none. Sometimes the fix does fix more stuff than you think it does. And yeah, that's basically how you do linting. You could also get a bit more creative and like comment out certain um, rules for some lines or stuff but that's gonna get really deep into it. And in most cases you shouldn't do it unless you have a really good reason to do so. So yeah, I hope you can apply linting for your projects and that it can help you to maintain good code quality. And yeah, I hope you'll have a good day.